Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In alhamdulillah, nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'gfiru. Wa na'uzu billah min shuduri anfusina wa min sayyi'ati amalina. Man yahdihillahu falamudillala. Wa min yudlil falahadiyala. Ashadu an la ilaha illallahu wahdahu la sharika la. Anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluhu. Ya ayyuhal lazina amanu tukullaha haqqa tukatihi. Wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. Ya ayyuhal nas. Attaku rabukum alazi khalakakum min nafsin wahida. Wa khalaka minha zawjaha. Wa batha minhuma. Rijalan kathiran wa nisaa. Wa taku allahi alazi tusa'aluna bihi wal arham. Inna allaha kana alaykum rakiba. Ya ayyuhal lazina amanu tukullaha wa kulu kawlan sadida. Yuslih lakum amalakum. Wa yaghfir lakum zinubakum. Man yuti allaha wa rasoolahu. Fakad faza fawzan azima. Amma ba'd. Rabbi sharli sadri wa yasir li amri. Wa ahlul uqtatum min lasani yafqahu kawli. My dear brothers and sisters, I am so grateful to be here once again, reflecting on the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with you. Uh, we are down to the last few names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you have been following along, this has been a multi-year journey for all of us. And after today, inshallah, we'll be left with four names to reflect on. And I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives me the opportunity to see this through and allow us to all benefit from the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness if I've made any errors and I seek refuge in Allah from my ego, first and foremost, because I do this for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, seeking only Allah's pleasure. And when the end of days arrives, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be the judge over all of us and our deeds will be reflected back to us so that we may be reminded of our shortcomings and may our good deeds, all of our good deeds, uh, outweigh the bad deeds and inshallah offset anything that might come our way uh, in a bad way. Alhamdulillah, ameen. Um, inshallah, my dear brothers and sisters, today I want to talk to you about the name Al-Badi uh, or Al-Badiya, which means the originator. So the root word for Badi is Ba Dal Ain, which has the meanings of to innovate, the innovator, or the originator. Um, so if we take the meanings of this name, we should get a clue that this name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Al-Badiya, should tell us that Allah is the original innovator. And let's try and understand what this means, the original innovator. Nothing is known to have existed before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And everything that exists follows from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we have an idea to invent anything, you know, it comes to us through inspiration. We as humans are inspired to create from what we see in our environment. However, this is not the case with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is the original innovator. Everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates is not inspired for some, from something that existed prior. So there's no precursor ingredients, if you will. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the original innovator, uh, as this word tells us, as this name tells us. So in Surah Al-Maryam, verse 35, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kun fayakun. And there's multiple places in the Quran where this statement kun fayakun uh, appears, which is bi kun, and it is kun fayakun. And this tells us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't have to toil like we do when we create anything. All Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says is kun fayakun, bi, and it is. And when I hear this verse specifically, you know, I think of the word miracle. There's nothing that is beyond the grasp of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if I think about the innovators that we may be familiar with, for example, Al-Ghazali. Al-Ghazali spent years of his life contemplating about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then writing about his contemplations and his learnings and then teaching this very same material. And his work helped millions, if not the entire Muslim community uh, for generations before and for generations to come. And if we think about other inventors like Einstein, for example, who also spent his entire lifetime studying and researching big topics and then presenting the theories and so on. And remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is also al-ghani and al-mughni, the rich and the enricher. So from our point of view, our ability to innovate is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enriching us. So we talked about these two attributes uh, in the past, some months ago. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also enriched all of humanity in multiple different ways. So let's look at one of those, those ways. Let's look at the love that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has shown humankind. 
by by enriching us you know we all of us share a similar form man or woman there's a specific uh, look and shape to us uh, we have certain things in common between men and women for example we have hair eyes uh, we have a nose we have lips and so on all these different body parts we share in common these physical traits while common each and every one of us are absolutely unique so on a planet, if you think about this, with 8 billion people, no two people are exactly the same. Even twins are individually unique. And this, my dear brothers and sisters, is an example of love from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you may wonder, you know, how, how is this love? So let me give you an example. Imagine if we have two identical coins. And, you know, we would not call these coins um, unique because there's two of them. And they're identical. And if these two coins were the only coins in the world, then we would say that these coins are rare. And because they're rare, it makes them valuable. Now imagine if we had billions of these individual coins or these identical coins, what do you think their value would be now if there's billions of them out there? So the value of these coins, as we know, would be next to nothing. Why? Because each and every one of those coins uh, if, if we lost one coin, it wouldn't diminish the total number of these coins. So it'll be hard to say that the value will increase with just the loss of one coin. So each coin uh, lost is not going to affect that much the value of these coins. Now, let's say we took away all those billions of coins and we're only left with one coin. Now, in that case, this coin is not unique. And in that case, also, this coin will now be the most valuable coin from among the billions of coins that are that are no longer in existence. So now let's look at what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has done for humanity. There are billions of us on earth and none of us are clones of one another. We are each unique with our own traits and our own characteristics. And this means that each of us has a responsibility to the other to respect the sanctity of our lives. And in Surah Al-Ma'idah we are told, وَمِنْ أَحْيَاهَا فَكَأَنَّمَا أَحْيَا النَّاسَ جَمِيعًا Whoever saves a life, it will be as if they saved all of humanity. We've heard this verse uh, in the Quran many, many times over. And the scholars tell us that this verse teaches us to protect each life from oppression and harm. Because nobody has a right to attack another person. And if a person is harmed or killed by another, then this is a sign of an illness in the community. And it is incumbent on all Muslims to defend every member of their community or their society from harm, wherever they may be living. So by telling us that all of humanity is saved when a single life is saved, emphasizes for us the sanctity of a single life and the obligation to each Muslim person. And this love of mankind um, is one of the ways in which al-Badi manifests itself for us. So on the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to hold each and every one of us to account individually. We're not going to be held to account collectively. So Allah is not going to group us by the color of our skin or our nationality or our looks or our physical traits, nothing. These are not important traits to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we're certainly not going to be judged by these traits, physical or otherwise. The only things that we will be judged on is our deeds. We will be accountable for our deeds. And in many places in the Quran, Allah reminds us, and one of those places is Surah Al-Baqarah, where, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, فَاسْتَبِكُ khairat, Compete with one another in doing good. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't create us as clones, each and every one of us individuals, but contrast this with how we as people treat one another. We have a propensity to collectivize people. We group people together by color, by caste, by creed, by status, by nationality, and so on and so forth. If a person from one nationality or skin color does something absolutely terrible, we are very quick to label the entire group as terrible. There isn't, I mean, we don't have to think hard to remind ourselves of an example when somebody may have said something that groups a specific group of, uh, that groups people in one bucket of this is a bad group, this is a group that does uh, whatever malady that they want to label a group with. And that is just the nature of mankind. So if I come back to innovations again, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-Badi, 
and the innovations of mankind. You know, it is in our nature also for the innovations that we create to seek credit for that. So we want everybody to know about our innovations. And that's part of our ego. That is how our nature operates. And especially when we invent something that is impactful on people's lives, we want to make sure that our name is attached to it. And we also want to profit from that and that nobody else should take credit for the inventions that we make. You know, but, but here's the thing. Every invention we create is an inspiration from something else that existed before or in our environment. Or we create these inventions by combining things that uh, we, we know about or we learn. So everything is inspired from something else. And if we look around and study the most notable individuals and companies and what they did, we will find certain patterns. You'll find that it was someone who noticed an opportunity at an inflection point in our society. And I can give you concrete examples of this. So uh, Lyft, everybody's familiar with Lyft or Uber. If it wasn't for the existence of a smartphone with GPS, Lyft or Uber would not have been able to exist. That was the inflection point. You know, and, and it would be around when iPhone 4S came out, that's when we see the GPS show up in the marketplace in, in smartphones. So without this inflection point, without this GPS component, Lyft wouldn't exist, Uber wouldn't exist because they would be they would struggle to connect the driver with the passenger. And similarly, if you think about the wheel, the thing that created the transportation industry, if it wasn't for somebody noticing that a pottery wheel, if turned on its side, it could roll, we would not have transportation today. So all of these realizations are inspirations from things that happen around us, you know, and you know we can we can talk about case studies after case studies, um, but you know, the example will come back again and again that we were inspired in some way. But how can we know for sure? How can we know that we as humans are unable to create something that is an originally an original idea not inspired from anything else in existence? So let's do a simple mental test. And this is the best that I could think of in the way of how do we how do we you know prove this that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the original innovator and the only one capable of coming up with this. You know, try and create a shape. Try and create a shape that doesn't resemble anything in nature. I couldn't come with it, and I doubt anybody else can. So coming up with a shape that even a small portion of it doesn't resemble something that already exists out there in my mind is, is virtually impossible. Let's do a second test. What about colors? We can see as many colors as our eyes allows us to see. But if we even combine colors, we know that they create certain new colors. Like for example, blue and yellow makes green. You know, we can, we can try our best, but can we really come up with a color that does not exist already in nature? And we can't. Our minds are not able to create anything that never existed before anything else. And if anyone can answer yes to any one of these mental tests, I would be very much interested in hearing their rationale and how they concluded that. So the point is, we are, as human beings, we are unable to create something from nothing. Whether we accept it or not, there's nothing original created by mankind. Even if we find examples of what we would think of as the most basic inventions, like say, for example, fire, we will realize that even fire needs fuel and we as people lack the ability to sustain a fire without feeding it. So fire needs something to start even before it can get going. And that spark that the fire needs, again, uh, demands that it has something else that existed before. So this is not to say that we lack innovation. You know, we have the ability to innovate. And this is a gift and blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us. Because we see credit for innovation, even the smallest of improvements, you know, we, we our heart wants that recognition. And look at the way we've created our, our world. We have systems that protect our inventions. We have a patent system. We have a legal system that protects the patent system. We have a patent system that makes sure that inventors are protected from other people stealing their intellectual property or performing theft, if you will. And this gives inventors the opportunity to profit from their invention. You know, the legal system makes sure that if somebody does steal somebody's intellectual thought, that they are held to account and they have some way to, um, you know, pay back or compensate the inventor for the harm that they have caused. So when we file a patent, 
you know, even then, it doesn't have to be an original idea. Our system of protecting ideas doesn't demand that it be an original idea. The only criteria is it must be a novel idea. So I'm, I'm oversimplifying this, but in general, the idea has to be novel. And a patent could be a minor improvement on the existing idea or patent. It can combine ideas or combine existing patents in a new and novel way or incrementally improve something that was already patented. So the point is, even our system of innovation doesn't expect original inventions. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't demand anything from us. You know, this gift that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us or all the gifts that we have and we enjoy, Allah doesn't demand anything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the true original inventor despite our inability to create anything original. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala treats every person with dignity by having a personal relationship with each and every one of us. You know, um, everything that we do, my dear brothers and sisters, is building on top of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already created. And if we think about, uh, you know, innovation in general, even within our faith, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created mechanisms for innovation. So what would be an example of this? You know, the compilation of the Quran is one example. When the, when the Prophet sallallahu after the Prophet sallallahu passed away in the time of uh, the caliphs, the first caliph, it was ordered that the chapters from the Quran be assembled together. And it wasn't until the death of the Prophet ﷺ that this activity started. So every verse in the Quran was kept exactly in the way it was revealed. While the chapters of the Quran in which we uh, read them today do not follow the order of revelation, the original verses are preserved and the scholars know when each verse was revealed. Or at least there's an extensive body of knowledge that help us uh, piece those things together. And, and similarly, you know, we can take the examples of the Hadith. Um, the Hadith is another example of an innovation that doesn't violate the laws given to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The, the work that was done to preserve the Hadith, um, measure the authenticity of those uh, Hadith. This is research work done that is very rigorous, uh, that is always looking to make sure that it's accurate as it was recorded and as it was uh, revealed uh, through the Prophet ﷺ. Now, let's look at this attribute al-Badi as it manifests itself in the life of the Prophet ﷺ. So all of humanity is unique. We've established that. From among all of humanity, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has raised messengers who spread the guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And each one of these messengers are are more unique than the rest of mankind. So from among the messengers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned some of them by name in the Quran. And those mentioned in the Quran are even more unique than the messengers raised from all of mankind. And then from among those messengers who are mentioned in the Quran, Allah elevates our Prophet sallallahu as the most unique from all of mankind. By revealing the Quran to the Prophet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has elevated the status of Muhammad sallallahu to the most unique from all of mankind. And the Quran, the Quran is absolutely a continuation of the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from previous revelation. Yet, it too is unique. It is the final revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The creed of the Quran is identical to previous revelation in that it tell mankind that there's only one God and that he alone is worthy of worship and nobody else. However, the laws uh, the, uh, or the fiqh, as we call it as Muslims, what we follow is different from all previous revelation. It is unique to Muslims and not identical to previous revelations. For example, the five pillars of Islam. We don't share the five pillars of Islam with the Jews or the Christians, for example. And the Muslims are commanded to follow these five pillars of Islam and to follow the example of the Prophet Sallallahu and his seerah. Now, why, why are we told to follow the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Because he is the best example and a living example, uh, or rather um, the manifestation of the laws that Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala has given us to the Quran. So I think we can all agree that our human nature is very different from the nature of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala. Our minds, as feeble as they are, we're unable to fathom the exact nature of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala. You know, but we have been given clues and guidance from Allah. We have guidance from the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
you know, while we are unable to come up with anything original without any influence, you know, we still have the capacity to innovate. Um, and inshallah, you know, may Allah elevate our understanding of the Quran, our understanding of the seed of the Prophet Sallallahu and increase us in knowledge, giving us the ability to use that wisdom and apply it into our lives each and every day. Aqulu qawli haza wa astaghfirullahi wa lakum wa lisa'idil muslimin wa astaghfiruhu innahu hulu khafuru rahim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, my brothers and sisters, you know, with every attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, um, we should take away some lessons. We should learn how we can apply it into our daily lives. You know, so thinking about al-Badi, how can we take this attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and apply it to our daily lives? Um, one way we can do this is to, to work to become more unique. You know, we're told in the Quran, in Surah Al-Anbiya, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةُ لِلْعَالَمِينَ We have sent you, O Prophet, only as a mercy for the whole world. And earlier we discussed that, you know, from all of mankind, the Prophet ﷺ has been elevated to the highest of ranks, to the highest amongst all uh, human beings. And this verse from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if we believe in the Qur'an and we believe in the authenticity of the Qur'an, is an affirmation that the Prophet ﷺ is the best of examples for us. So if we want to become the most unique that we can be, or as we say, uh, you know, the best version of ourselves, then the best way for us to do this is to follow the best of all examples, and that is the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu So from this attribute, Al-Badi, one of the important lessons we learn is that we must model our lives on Muhammad Sallallahu so that we can be elevated, not just in this world, but also in the Day of Judgment, by showing our unique ability to follow the teachings and the guidance from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So, um, you know, in truth, it's a daunting task for most of us because most of us will need to learn about the Prophet Sallallahu and his life. Most of us will need to spend time with the Quran, reflect on it, study it. And to be fair, that is a challenging pursuit for all of us in the busyness that we all have in our day-to-day -day living. So if we need to, you know, if we need a boost of encouragement, you know, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala gives us that too in the Quran, where Allah tells us in Surah al kabut as for those who struggle in our cause, we will surely guide them along our way, and Allah is certainly with the good doers. So if you need encouragement, this is encouragement for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Strive, do your best, coil in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us the knowledge and the wisdom to go along with it so that we may model our lives after the Prophet sallallahu so that we too may be elevated in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us all guidance and keep us on the straight path. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all genital fardos. And I ask Allah to bless us with pious spouses and offspring who will be the joy of our hearts and make us models for the righteous. And I ask Allah to forgive our sins, absolve us of our misdeeds, and allow us each to die as one of the virtuous. And I ask Allah to make us from among those and our descendants from among those who keep up with their prayers. And I ask Allah to forgive us, our parents and the believers on the day when judgment will come to pass. Rabbana hablana min azwajina wa zuriyatina kurata ayuni wa jalna lil mutakine imama. ربنا فاغفر لنا ذنوبنا وكفر عنا سيئاتنا وتوفنا مع الأبرار ربي جلني مكيم الصلاة ومن زرياتي ربنا وتقبل دعاء ربنا اغفر لي ولي والدي ولي المؤمنين يوم يقوم الحساب ربنا آمنا فاغفر لنا وارحمنا وأنت خير الرحمين إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعزكم لعلكم تذكرون لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام للمرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين آمين اللهم آمين